Excellent! Hey everyone, welcome to Paul's Hardware. Today I'm bringing you an unboxing of a brand new product from Asus. Unfortunately, I also have a plane to catch to Taiwan in about like 36 hours or so, and I should probably pack too. So this is going to be a quick unboxing, a first look, uh, but if you guys follow my channel at all, you might recognize the Sabertooth Z77. That was probably one of my favorite Z77 boards that came out. So today I'm going to be showing you the Sabertooth Z87. So let's jump in. We're starting off with a closer look at the box. The Sabertooth Z87, of course, features the new Z87 chipset from Intel, as well as the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors. You might more uh, well know them as Haswell. Uh, this is part of the Tough series, so you get a five-year warranty due to the military class components and ASUS standing behind their work. This one also supports two-way SLI and three-way Crossfire X if you're into multi-card configurations. On the back of the box, you get a layout of the board, some detailed specs. I'm just going to give a quick look at this. If you guys want to pause, you can read over them all individually. Uh, you also get thermal armor, uh, tough Fortifier, which I'll show in just a sec, the Thermal Radar 2, uh, which gives you a bunch of temperature read points on the board, as well as Dust Defender, which is essentially a bunch of plugs and caps for all the ports on the board so that you can keep dust out of them when they're not in use. Inside the box, you have this tough bag, which is a really tough bag, I suppose. Uh, this is going to include your Dust Defender parts, also a couple small fans, that's for the thermal armor. They're optional, you can or cannot use them depending on your configuration and if you want to keep them cool. And don't worry, they don't spin too fast and in my experience they stay pretty quiet. Uh, you also get a Dust Defender filter, uh, of course all those caps for your USB, uh, your video outs, and then uh, also your rear panel I.O. Uh, also, dust defender caps for your PCI Express and your DIMM slots, some 1X shorter ones for PCI Express. Fan slot covers, and uh, also there are your PCI Express 16X covers. Uh, also, you get some thermal radar temperature sensors. Uh, these are on cables, so you can kind of place them remotely wherever you might want to in your case. You get a black Q connector, very nice. It should blend in much better, not stand out quite as much as the white Q connectors we've seen in the past. You also get a USB header, uh, an SLI bridge, you get an IO shield, it's uh, black in color, all the IOs are labeled, you get some squishy electrostatic discharge shielding on the back there as well, and then you also get a software and driver disc of course, best to download the latest ones of these from the ASUS website. You're going to get an accessory installation guide, uh, this one's just to sort of guide you through using the dust defender parts, and then you're going to get a user guide which is kind of a pretty standard user's guide with lots of info about the board. Rounding out the accessories, you get a tough inside sticker to place wherever you want to place a sticker. Certificate of reliability, that's for the military class caps, chokes, and MOSFETs on the board. And of course, SATA cables, you get four of them, and I like that uh, they've actually given you a couple with straight plugs on both ends and a couple with uh, straight plugs and then two 90 degree angled plugs. And on to the motherboard itself. You will notice the tough theme showing right through. If you've ever looked at one of the ASUS tough series motherboards in the past, they typically feature military colors. In this case, you got black, silver, some brown, and some tan on the slots. Also, a few green highlights as well. You will notice the black plastic thermal armor. That's a cover. It's going to protect the components on the board. It's also going to allow you to channel airflow more directly, specifically over a lot of the power delivery components on the board. More on that in just a moment. You're also going to get the Tough Fortifier. It's a metal backplate. So you've probably seen backplates on video cards. So now you got one on a motherboard. It's got the very clever We Got Your Back uh, text right on there. This is going to provide some extra rigidity for the board, some more sturdiness. It also gives a, a nice little feature that just lets you set the board down on a flat surface without having to worry about actually dinging the surface you're setting it on or damaging any of the components on the board, which I, I found to be very handy. Uh, it looks pretty cool too. You'll notice a little bit of texture on the Tough Fortifier and it's also spaced out a little bit from the PCB and that's going to allow some air to flow back there because the back of the motherboard does get warm too. Uh, you will notice thermal armor vents. This is uh, back on the, on the front with the plastic thermal armor. Those are called flow valves by ASUS. You can flip them open or close and again that's going to let you channel the air or block it depending on your configuration and whether or not you have the little fans installed. Next up, the PCI Express 3.0 area, you'll notice all of these slots. You get three X1 slots, and then you get three 
full size physically 16x slots and uh, Haswell processors or at least most of the high-end ones are going to have 16 PCI Express 3.0 lanes if you have a single card installed it'll run at 16x on that top slot you can also do an 8x and 8x configuration that'll be for two-way SLI or Crossfire X and then you do have three-way Crossfire X support and that uh, all the full-length slots will run at 8 4 and 4 if you actually populate all three of them uh, for SATA over on the side, you have uh, a bunch of SATA Revision 3 6 gigabits per second ports available from the Z87 chipset. That's native. Those are the brown ports that you see right there. And those being native means they're going to be very fast. You also get RAID support, RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. Um, so if you need to plug in a bunch of SSDs, you're going to be all set. These also support Intel's Smart Response and Rapid Start technology. You also notice a couple TAN ports right there. Those are actually from an add-on Asmedia chip, also SATA Rev 3, 6 gig gigabits per second. And speaking of add-on Asmedia chips, there's also a couple eSATA 3 ports available on the back, also from an Asmedia add-on chip. You also probably spot a uh, green right angle port right there. That's USB 3.0. Um, that's another great feature of Z87. You get native USB 3.0, uh, six of those available. Two of them will be available from that right angle header. Along the bottom edge, you'll notice some additional headers. Uh, you got your USB 2.0, got some front panels. Uh, you got chassis fan headers, two four pin ones down there. Speaking of chassis fan headers, uh, you also get three more fan headers at the top edge that are also four pin, a couple for CPU and then one more for chassis. Uh, you also have the direct key button, and that will allow you to uh, immediately access the UEFI. Uh, also, an audio front panel header. Uh, and then we will move on to the DDR3 DIMM slots. This is dual channel, of course, uh, just like you might have noticed for Sandy Bridge or Ivy Bridge. Uh, dual channel, so they're color-coded fire sticks in sets of two. Supports up to 32 gigs of memory. Uh, of course, also supports Intel's XMP, or Extreme Memory Profiles, and official 1866 speed support from Intel. You can also go for overclock speeds beyond that if you so desire. To the left of the DIMM slots, we have the 1150 socket. That's going to be for your fourth generation Haswell processor. Not backwards compatible. Don't drop an Ivy Bridge or a Sandy Bridge processor in there. Uh, you get military class power delivery components. You'll see them peeking out there underneath the thermal armor. They look quite nice. They got some logos on them. Uh, you can see some of the chokes and caps right there. Laid out very, very tantalizingly. That's for your power delivery. And finally, we'll close with the rear I.O. So here you have the rest or the uh, four more of your USB 3.0, also natively supported by Z87 chipset. Uh, these all, I should mention, including that front panel header, support Asus USB 3.0 boost, uh, which gives you markedly improved USB 3.0 transfer speeds. Also, four USB 2.0 ports. Uh, you'll see a little gap there, and that's uh, for the thermal armor fan. If you do install that, it'll give some ventilation for that. Uh, you get an HDMI and display port for the iGPU in your Haswell processor. Uh, you got an Intel NIC, you get an optical toss link, and audio ins and outs, and that's for your integrated audio. And that is going to wrap it up for this quick unboxing and overview video, guys. And uh, what I'd like to hear from you is what kind of more in-depth coverage you'd like to see of this board or of other boards uh, from the Asus Z87 line, because I have access to a couple of them right now. And uh, I'd love to sort of dig into the BIOS, perhaps, maybe some of the extra features that ASUS has added on, uh, whether you're talking software or hardware-based. Uh, so please leave me a comment in the comment section below. Let me know uh, what you'd like me to do with this board, apart from plugging it in and using it, of course. And I'll be sure to follow up and try to bring you guys as much of that coverage as I possibly can. But until then, I'm going away to Taiwan for a couple weeks. I'll be reporting from Computex, so you can find that coverage uh, on our New Egg TV YouTube channel. Actually, by the time this video goes up, Chances are I'll, I will already have been there and will already be posting. So check out our YouTube channel. I'm sure I'm on there doing crazy stuff in Taiwan. Uh, but that's all for this one. I guess uh, subscribe if you like the video. Like the video if you thought it was useful. And I'll see you all in Taiwan.